With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by singlemuslim.com. I'm Fahima Mohammed, your host and your relationship coach. We have another wonderful series and episode for you tonight. I'm really looking forward to having all of you be part of this episode, and you are welcome to do so, whether you are watching on Sky Channel 752, whether it's Facebook or Twitter. A very, very warm welcome from all of us here on British Muslim. Muslim TV. We are really excited to have another guest with another topic. And of course, you are again invited to join in the conversation. Please do so by calling in directly to the studio on 01924-231083. Please do ask the bill payers permission as standard network rates do apply. However, we have another option for you if you want to send us a message for free on our WhatsApp service. That number is 7 Five eight five eight three five one five zero, and we can keep you anonymous if you wish to do so. Now we have another topic: seven weeks to finding the one. An exciting topic with an extraordinary guest of mine tonight, all the way from New York, streaming. We have Ramsha Suhail. Salamu alaikum, Ramsha. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Fahima. It is such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on. It is my pleasure, actually. It is my honor to have you sitting with me tonight. I know how busy you are. And obviously, you've been traveling around the country. And finally, you are in New York City. And, you know, what a pleasure to have you join us today. How is the weather out there? Thank you. The weather is actually stunning. It's so beautiful. I took a walk this morning. It was lovely. So I'm grateful to be here. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. So what an interesting topic. And you know, there's so many of us that do struggle with finding the one and you are quite brave tonight. And we are going to go straight into it with regards to wanting to know how quick we can find somebody in, in a few weeks time. But anyways, before we get into the conversation, tell me a little bit about yourself so our viewers can learn a bit, you know, a bit about you. Sure. So I'm Ramsha. I am a published author of Submission, The Theory of Everything. I'm also a graduate student in mental health counseling, and I'm the founder of a custom made program, coaching program designed for highly ambitious women to attract and marry Mr. Right using positive psychology. I call it enlightened match. And I'm really Amazing. excited about it here today. No, I, I can tell. I'm so excited to have you. I think it's such an important um, sort of, you know, journey that we have to go through and we have to make sure that it's the right one. So what made you sort of, you know, pick on that actual figure with regards to, you know, seven weeks to finding the one? I mean, a lot of people might be a bit skeptical about that. What is the secret? Like, you know, you were going to allow that. We're going to go into the stages. So, um, how is it because most people don't put a number on it how come it is so quick you know in most people's eyes that you know you can see um these are the kind of sort of like time that it will take you is it really about timing sure so before we even get into that the exact secret sauce or the four steps that i used um, one thing was that for years I actually struggled with this. So both my best friend and I, we were in the matchmaking trenches for, you know, a few years. And then, you know, New Year's Eve of 2020, as you know, 2021 is about to dawn. I'm just thinking and I'm like, you know what, this has to change. We've been wasting so many years on the wrong person or the wrong ideas or, you know, the wrong matches. And it's about time we figured out how to do this right. And so that's when I uh, wrote it down in my journal that, uh, Alhamdulillah, I found my soulmate. I had no idea where he was. I had no idea who he was, what he looked like, when I was going to find him. But I wrote it down in my journal that at the start of the year, by the end of 2021, I was going to be a happily married woman. 
And, um, you know, from there, then Alice Panatella, once I made that decision, Alice Panatella guided me and opened the doors uh, of opportunity for me to be, um, you know, connected with this resource that really did make it happen in about seven weeks uh, till I got engaged. So that's where the time, you know, for so long it was taking forever. And then all of a sudden, when it was the right time, when it was God's time, then, you know, the plant just sprouted and, you know, started giving fruit. So I'm really, really grateful for that. And wow. Very- Thank you. Thank you for sharing even your personal story. So this is not something that is just theory. This is actually real because it's actually your experience as well, which I think is really fascinating. So a lot of people might actually really jump onto this idea. And as you were speaking, it come to mind with regards to um, journaling, which I know a lot of, you know, coaches and a lot of, you know, people do actually advocate for that. And the fact that, you know, you setting up your mindset to be in a particular way. So, um, I guess you could call it sort of law of attraction or manifestation, but obviously with us, it's also having the tawak call. Um, what are the other things that a sort of an individual needs to sort of set themselves up to be in a particular way um, in order to sort of like, you know, like the first step you said was to journal, what would be sort of the next sort of thing that would be quite useful? Sure. So I think it's really, really important to, like you said, have that tawak call. But before even going there, Um, You know, a lot of us have these stories that we have in our minds about, you know, I'm not going to, especially as high achieving Muslim women, I'm going to have to settle because people tell you that all the time. I'm going to have to compromise on X, Y, Z quality because, you know what, I'm too um, qualified and I won't be able to find the right match within my culture, within my religion. So we have these stories and these scripts that are, you know, wired, hardwired into our brains. And the first step, what we need to do to get ourselves out of that same situation where we keep attracting the wrong matches is to, you know, rewrite that story. So in order to rewrite that story, what I always say to my clients is don't rely on what people tell you. Don't rely on what the rich auntie tells you. Don't rely on what, you know, um, some uh, lady on the street tells you. Don't rely on what the elders tell you. Rely on what the Quran tells you. Rely on what God himself tells you. And what does God tell us about the existence of soulmates and about what marriage is really supposed to be is that, you know, it's nothing short of immense peace, exactly what our hearts want. Peace, love, mercy, you know, two mates that are living together in harmony, um, you know, together as one and from peace at home to peace in the world. That was how, that is how the design is supposed to be as God intended. So we have to draw our inspiration from that, not from the opinions of people that are ever changing. I hope that sheds some light on it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Actually rolls on nicely because we actually already have our first question and thank you for sending that in and all the engagements so far. And uh, somebody has sent in a question asking, how do we overcome the fact that we Arab or Desi women are oftentimes more advanced intellectually, spiritually, financially, um, that the prospective suitor um, that is available to us, I mean, should we settle? I mean, I, I know you kind of said that, but I guess, you know, a lot of uh, women generally are finding themselves to be highly educated and financially secure. And they feel that, you know, they don't have a match. I hear that so much. Like, what is your thoughts on that? Yeah. So again, I think that, you know, the question was, do I have to settle? Right. Right. So I'll uh, pop the question back to the questioner, actually, and say, is that what you want to be your story? Do you want to settle? Because the reality of the situation is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us such immense power. This is what, you know, modern day law of uh, manifestation, law of attraction is all about, is about the power to author your own story. So when I was in the trenches and I was going through all of the struggle and pain and heartache, you know, I had to draw and on my belief in God, I had to think, okay, what is the story that I want for my life? Do I want to settle or do I want my intellectual match who's going to help me fulfill my highest destiny? 
when I imagined that, I was like, no way, I'm not going to settle. I cannot settle because then I'm going to, you know, I've heard too many stories of people that are unhappily married and all of these incredible, brilliant women that go into the wrong match, incompatible matches, and then end up wasting the best years of their lives, end up, you know, losing out on their dreams and those prime years. And I was like, you know what, that's not going to be my story. So when I decided that, that's when, like I shared that, um, you know, the path opened for me to uh, figure out, okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? So first I would say, decide what your story is going to be. Are you going to settle or not? And I can guarantee you what I would tell myself is that, you know what, Allah's going to send an angel man for me. He's going to send an angel to me. No matter what, I don't care what this real world looks like. I believe in God. God is the author of all miracles. And if I do the inner work, he promised that he's going to change my condition. I don't care what the stats say. I care what God says. And he did come through with that miracle. I love that point, but I, I do want to sort of like ask you, because a lot of people say that, you know, because we, um, as you said, we're going to be the author of our story and we're obviously going to not worry about the statistics. But a lot of people say, well, the reason why that a lot of women are single, especially now a bit older, is because they are not actually being reasonable. And, um, you know, they're not actually looking at the reality uh, of what the situation is. So um, what's your sort of thoughts on that? Because I think, you know, a lot of people think, well, you know, I deserve this. This is what I earn. My, my partner has to earn that much. So how do you know who is your match in that sense? I mean, do we just do it in a spiritual level or do we not actually look at some of the um the realities that is in front of us do we ignore that i mean we want to look at some real case studies here to say that if one woman you know thinks she's a high flyer at work and if someone comes you know and they don't have the same amount of bank balance is that really settling or is that just being reasonable you know what does that you know sort of sound like to you so the first thing that I would say is, is it is by a case by case basis, because none of us two are the same, right? So what you would need to do if you're in that situation, from my opinion, is to decide what exactly it is without any guilt, without any shame, without any fear. What do you want in your ideal match? If you could have everything you wanted, lay it out on the table, write it down, this is, you know, golden advice. So just write it down, confront it um, in front of you so that it's right there. So you know what you're looking for, because if you don't have the goalpost, then whatever match is going to come, you know, you're going to be uh, whatever, whether it's compatible or incompatible, you're going to be like, oh, maybe he's the one, maybe he's the one, maybe he's the one. And I'll have Completely. to come yeah, no, completely, completely uh, understand what you're saying. And you know what? Um, you've definitely given us a great introduction to the uh, episode so far. We are coming on to a short break, but we are coming back. Make sure you stay with us. We have so much more questions that are coming through. I really do appreciate all of you that are actually interacting with us right now. It's been an absolute pleasure to be hosting, you know, week by week. But honestly, the main thing is that knowing that you guys are actually speaking to us. And I will be reading out more of your messages when we do come back. Make sure that you stay exactly where you are. We have so much more for Ramsha. And inshallah, we will see you in a few moments. Salam. With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by SingleMuslim.com. I'm here with the lovely Ramsha all the way streaming from New York to answer your questions, as well as, you know, sort of give us some tips as to how to find the one in a few weeks time. So hopefully if you're taking notes, you know, we're going to be actually getting a lot of emails and sort of, you know, uh, queries with regards to saying, you know what, I actually did find the one. And it really is a possibility. As we we're talking in the beginning of the show, we mentioned how important it is 
that you are the author of your story. So it's what you think, how you perceive life, regardless of what is around you, but you having to have that great understanding of what is it that you want, write it down, believe it, think it, and inshallah, it does manifest. We do have another question that's come through. It's more like a statement, actually. It's saying, I think my partner is dead, been trying for months. <laughs> Oh, I know it's such a hard sort of journey to find the one. What would be your response to someone like that? <laughs> oh my God. I would say, trust me, girl, I've been there. Okay. First off, um, second off, when you're at that point where you're just questioning the mere existence of your partner, I would highly, highly recommend to draw on even one positive example in your life, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on TikTok or whatever, you know, social media platform or in reality, um, some beautiful marriages. OK, so we have so many examples of marriages gone wrong. We don't have enough people speaking out on marrying the love of their lives, uh, dwelling in peace for like 20, 30, 40 plus years and helping each other achieve their dreams. So find that one person, that one example, um, when you're at that really low point to reignite that belief that yes, true love and yes, you know, divine connection, your soulmate definitely exists and is possible. Just hold on, you know, a little bit longer. And a beautiful story that I quickly want to share with you is about timing. Mm -hmm. This was a story I learned from someone called who calls himself the mailman. 35,000 feet up in the air. I was on a plane. I was, uh, you know, I was a newlywed bride and my husband was, was in another country. I was in another country. I was asking God for guidance. And turns out the person that I sit next to, God's mailman, has published books on letting go and all of this kind of stuff. So he teaches me something that I never thought of before. He says that when Adam and Eve were in heaven, when Prophet Adam and Hazrat Hawa were in paradise, God always wanted them to eat from that tree. Now, again, that's his perspective. So take it with a grain of salt, but focus on the lesson. So what happened? Well, when, uh, you know, Adam and Eve, when they were tempted to eat from the tree, the seed, the fruit was actually raw. It wasn't ripe yet. The timing wasn't God's mm -hmm. timing. So because the fruit was raw, it was not nutritious. It uh, tasted really not so great. It hurt their stomachs and it couldn't reproduce when they ate from the tree prematurely. If they had waited and if we wait for God's timing, it's the ripe time, the perfect time when the fruit is delicious, nutritious and can reproduce is amazing for your health and your skin and everything. So God wants the best for us. So let's think well of God is, you know, the ultimate. I love that story. I think it's such an amazing way of understanding. And I think my next question you answered already with regards to timing, because a lot of us do feel, especially as women, you know, our biological clock is ticking and there's only, and, you know, statistically um, around the globe, actually, and as well in the Muslim community, uh, there are more and more older um, sort of like, you know, individuals that are not getting married. And even when you mentioned before about surrounding yourself or looking at some of these uh, amazing couples, I was actually talking to somebody earlier today, um, another client, and um, he was actually saying, you know, I, I'm just like, you know, I'm almost 30. I said, you're still young, don't worry. And then on top of that, it was like, well, I'm just seeing all these weddings everywhere and I'm only attending as a guest. When is it going to be my turn to be the actual groom? So, you know, as much as you can even surround yourself with all of that, you know, you can look at it. It's perspective, right? It's all about perspective. Yeah. So um, anyways, I have another question, actually. We're coming in quite a lot today. Um, how important is physical attraction? If someone is good on paper, but you feel no physical attraction at all, um, should you go for it or not? That's a really interesting one. Thank you again for that question. <laughs> yes, thank you. So about physical attraction, from my experience, I've seen that um, before we even get to the attraction part, 
when you're on that first phone call, I was on the first phone call with my husband. I had two phone calls and then after that we were engaged. So it was like the arranged marriage you think of is never going to work ended up with me finding the love <laughs> of life. You know, incredible. I mean, the way God works. So alhamdulillah. So the first thing is when you talk to this person, gauge how your body feels. Gauge, mm -hmm. you know, your chest and your gut, your stomach area especially. See if you are, you know, relaxed, calm, at peace, or if you feel like you have to hide a part of yourself where you feel some sort of tightness, you feel, you know, withdrawn or holding back. And your body is going to tell you these signs from the get go. If you just take a moment to listen to them, it's going to be guiding you throughout your life, especially in this most important decision to help you find the one. So that's step one gauge how your body feels when you talk to this person. Step two is about the physical attraction. Now, personally for me, when I first saw those bio data pictures of my husband to be, had no idea he was gonna be the one, um, I didn't know instantaneously. I was not initially like head over heels, wow, like such chemistry or, you know, he's so uh, breathtaking or handsome or, you know, etc. It took after our engagement, the time we had five months of a long distance um, engagement. And that was the time when slowly, slowly, because we were communicating regularly and got to know each other, that the attraction started building up. That's when the chemistry, you know, began. So don't, you know, just write it off. It, it depends, right? It's like if you can't stand to look at the person, God forbid, then, you know, move on to someone else. I had some um, matches. I had over like 50 potential rishtas to sift through almost on the daily when I was in, you know, the search. And some people I would just see automatically and I would be like, no, this is not it. This is not someone I can see myself with. So ask yourself that. And if it's someone on the fence, give them a chance. See mm -hmm. how your body feels and then get to know them and see, you know, how it proceeds. So don't just write them off from the get go. If they're I think that's really sound advice. And I think it's really, really vital that we uh, understand ourselves very well. Like you said, you know, listen to how you feel, uh, feel how you feel and understand how your body reactions are. And I think a lot of the times we are also, we so bombarded by what is the expectation. We actually, you know, not even understanding ourselves anymore because we're looking at how society looks at certain things and then we're making decisions upon that. So I think what you said is very, very crucial to be honest. And I think that's really important that we do understand that you did mention as well about um, having so many uh, potentials like how do people put themselves out there I know we have these apps and they're absolutely brilliant to find but it's very difficult to filter in different countries it's very difficult even if they go to weddings and they have cousins and relatives and things like that like you know what are the things that you would sort of say to an individual to you know put themselves out um, consciously with regards to finding a potential? I mean, is there any other sort of like guidelines you can give? Sure, that's a brilliant question, Fahima. Thank you for asking that. Um, I would say uh, before you even go out there, make some room for that love to enter your life. I'm mm. speaking from personal experience because for about a year, year and a half, I was holding on to the wrong person, the idea, the fantasy of a person, which prevented me, you know, which, you know, uh, from finding the one potentially, and Allah knows best, sooner. So what I would recommend for those who are looking right now, make some room, let go of the person who's not committing to you, let go of the wrong relationship, let go of the negative voices, whether in your head or in others, try your best take one step, you know, your goals take 10 steps towards you. So just make, uh, take that step to make some room because if your soulmate's going to land and he's definitely alive, if you're looking for him, he's looking for you too. So if he's going to land, he needs like some place, he needs some space, you know, um, on the nightstand or, you know, in wherever <laughs> it is to land. So you have to make that room. So that's, that's definitely really, really important. Well, we're coming to a break very shortly, but before we do, maybe I can get one quick question in if we can. Um, one uh, sort of like um, viewers asked, I have been working on myself for the past couple of years. How do I know I'm enough and ready for marriage? Wow, that's a deep question. 
Yes, it is. And it sounds like this person has definitely been working within. Um, what I would say is that, do you think you're enough? Are you asking us or are you asking God? Are you asking that inner voice within you? Because if you ask that inner voice within you where you should always seek your validation from, you'll find out that you were always enough. You were always enough to hold your own hand, to take yourself out, to you know achieve all of your dreams, to make your vision of your dream future come true. You were always enough. So the minute you realize that, you'll understand what Rumi says when he shares that your job is not to seek for love, it's to remove all the barriers between you and love. So that's what I'll share with you is, you know, if you've removed beautiful. them, you've, you're ready. Beautiful. To that's absolutely beautiful. I love everything you're saying. Like, honestly, I hope everyone is listening and taking note because this is really important. We only have Ramsha for tonight. So make sure you take advantage. And I know a lot of you already are. And thank you so much for sending all those questions through. I've actually got a few more to go through, but I'm not going to read them out now as we are coming on to a very short break. But I just want to reiterate again that Honestly, this topic is so important for us to actually get ourselves in the right mindset and to understand that we are only here because we are on a journey and everyone's journey is different and the process is different. And as much as we want to compare with everybody else and we all have a timeline, we have an expectation. Yes, we can have all of that. But honestly, just continuously work on yourself. You just don't know, even if you've been wait, waiting and working on yourself for years, it just takes like literally an overnight thing where you're just like, you know, maybe for a second, not thinking about it and it can actually happen. You can catch up with people that have been married for maybe a few years before you. And within a year, I've heard stories that has actually happened where they've caught up even with part, you know, with the people around them very quickly. So please don't lose hope and please don't actually leave us tonight because we are still going to continue with this episode. Make sure that you come back and you are listening to us, sending all your questions and I'm happy to read them out. And inshallah, we will be back in a few moments and we will be talking more to Ramsha about how to find the one in a few weeks. We will see you shortly. Salam. With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by singlemuslim.com. I'm loving the conversation tonight. It's absolutely amazing. It's just going by so quickly, but we do have so much more time in order for you to send through your questions. And Ramsha, we've actually had a question come through to the break in the break. So I'm going to read that out first for you. And um, the actual question is, how do you trust men again when they have um, betrayed or cheated on you? And how can you start trusting yourself and the process of dating when you have experienced all of that betrayal? That is quite a serious question. And thank you again for sending that through. Um, so yeah, what's your response to that? Sure. First, again, I'd like to thank uh, the viewers who sent in that question. And before I share my perspective, Bima, I'd love to hear your take on this. What do you think? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think when you've gone through that kind of journey, I think it's really important that you need to assess how you're feeling in the moment, how you have actually developed in that sort of process. Because I think it's important for you to sort of, you know, go through a process because there is a process after, you know, betrayal or end of a relationship. And you need to realize what sort of, you know, stage you're at. And you have to be at a stage not to just move on because you feel that's just the next thing to do. You have to feel ready within yourself. You have to do more of the inner work to understand that you're not carrying any baggage. And um, whatever happened in your past, it does not define you, but it does take time. So please don't rush into anything. Make sure you actually work with a professional you know, professional, it will really do you good to actually assess, you know, not to say there's any blame, but there's always some sort of accountability, responsibility as to, you know, how we were in that other relationship in order for you to move on completely free from baggage. 
That's the most important thing. Then you'll be able to, even in the process of looking for somebody, you can still continue working on yourself. You're never going to be like, okay, that's it. I've healed. I'm ready. That's what people also mis, you know, conceive about the fact that, you know, there's a misconception that, you know, we have to fully heal in order to move over. No, you have to do the work and make sure that you are continuously doing it. And again, like Ramsha said, every case is different depending on how long you were in that relationship and how the ending was in a way, you know, whether you've got even family, you still have to see that partner or maybe you never need to see them because there's no children involved. So there's so many things that you have to consider that they might still be in your life and how you're going to deal with that. So there is definitely a process. There's a stage after you know, betrayal and being cheated on, but make sure that you understand that process by working with somebody. And inshallah, you will be able to get to the next level very, very quickly, especially when you work with a professional. Right. How do you think? <laughs> I hear you and, you know, I validate everything that you just shared. Um, the part about giving yourself time is so, so important, not rushing into things prematurely, because imagine you rush into things, you know, a few months later um, prematurely, and then you end up wasting years of your life because that, again, was the wrong match. So save yourself from all of that trouble. Ask Allah for guidance. Ask Allah for support. Consult a qualified mental health professional. And then, you know, give yourself that breathing space, give yourself that time and learn not only is it about trusting someone else, learn to trust yourself again. Learn to trust that you are so deserving of love. And like you said, Fahima, that this experience does not define you and detaching yourself from, you know, the past and moving on to a much more brighter future. Because again, something brilliant you shared is without all of the baggage. So I like mm -hmm. to give you an example of a bird. And a bird, if it has little anchors tied to its feet, little weights, it's not gonna be able to fly. So you wanna be able to fly to your divine match. You wanna be able to fly to heaven on earth. So in order to do that, you really have to go in deep and do the work, um, take the time, and inshallah, you will find what's destined for you the best inshallah inshallah thank you so much for that question as well and i hope it you know if there is anyone that has been triggered by anything that has been said tonight please do take care and you can contact britishmuslim.tv forward slash support for any further sort of assistance actually we have another question and this particular question is a uh, person is saying so many questions i have but i guess my biggest concern is my fear of having to settle it's always just a career or marriage, never both. Women are always expected to compromise everything, lose their job, their city, their friends, family, to move closer to their husband's area of work, family, etc. cetera. Um, it always seems just unfair to me. Okay, what is your response to that? I think that's really interesting, actually, and it is quite a dilemma. I do have my own thoughts, but if you want to go first, please do. <laughs> uh, sure, Fahima, if you want to share, please go ahead. Yeah, I, you know what, at the end of the day, um, you know, you, you can have it all. Um, I really do believe that. And again, it is a case by case study. But at the same time, I do feel that there are so many, you know, stories that I know that people are either studying when they're young, and they do find their match, and they can actually, um, you know, get married quite young. But that compromise is part of responsibility and growing up. But you obviously, like Ramsha said at the beginning, you got to know yourself well, in order to know what you're willing to compromise, your values are really important. And inshallah, when you actually have that match and you find that partner and you talk about these certain steps that you want to, you know, see yourself in the next few years with that partner, whatever stage you're at, then you won't be giving up so much. And don't look at it like as if you're giving up. You're not actually compromising and giving up. You're actually moving into a different direction because marriage is about consideration, right? Um, there's a scholar that mentioned that actually marriage is defined as a shared struggle. So whenever you think that you're on your own and you're doing your own thing, life is tough. But now you've got someone who has support for you, who you can lean on, who is going to have your back. Look at it like that, not necessarily like giving up or settling or it's a compromise where you, you're actually not having a lot of yourself. You know, if you look at, you know, your partner as a team member, then maybe with that sort of mindset, you could move forward quite easily, inshallah. What's your thoughts, Ramsha? Okay. How did you think about that, Ramsha? 
Sure. So again, validating everything you just shared, um, I want to take it back. I love that you mentioned what the scholar said, because I want to take it back to over 1400 years ago, where the Prophet ﷺ, the best human being to ever exist, married someone who was 15 years older than him, who comp like gave away so much of her physical, her um, financial, her um, you know emotional uh, self, so much, shared so much of that with the Prophet ﷺ, um, gave so much up for the, for the sake of his mission. Um, you know, so she was a woman who did that. And the Prophet ﷺ, of course, you know, because like you mentioned, Fahima, that it was a shared struggle that he definitely, um, you know, met her uh, all the way and he was the best spouse. So that was that's the ideal example for us to look up to in which there's this balance of both the husband and the wife that are helping each other achieve their dreams. In present day, my sister-in-law, I want to share her a little bit about her story. She's a pediatrician here in Ohio, and she moved uh, to the U.S. Uh, you know, about 20 years ago with her husband. They had to, because she was a foreign medical graduate, they had to move all over the country for her to find those very little designated spots for foreign um, graduates in uh, those residency programs. And so my brother-in-law, he would go all over, you know, they bought a house here, then, you know, they would give it up, move, pick up everything and go for the sake of his wife's dreams. And he was ready and willing to do that. Right now, she's primarily, um, you know, out there in the workforce. Uh, majority of the time, he's working from home. But because he's working from home, he's sharing in that struggle, and he's um, helping take care and mentor the kids. So he's, you know, doing that. Then she does her part, um, whether it's the cooking, whether it's whatever it is, whether you know, it's just uh, the spending time. They they find a way to balance it out. So it doesn't have to be that the woman has to give everything up. There are examples, including in my own marriage, where my husband is moving 7,000 miles just for me, which, um, you know, along with that, I started, applied to and started graduate school after I was married from his encouragement. I found it enlightened Nash with his encouragement and his support. And I can honestly say that I'm so grateful to God to have someone, and I'm not the only one, to have someone espouse who encourages me to pursue my dreams and tells me that he has my back. So it doesn't have to be, you know, either or. There can be this beautiful balance that happens when you're both willing to put your best in this relationship. Secret. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that story. Again, we're having a lot of uh, real case studies that we are sharing tonight because it's important that you realize that this is just not book theory. We're not just saying this because, you know, we've learned a few theories and we're talking about this. We deal with real clients and Ramsha herself has shared her own story. So it's really important that you realize that. Um, before we go into a break, I just have a quick um, question actually, uh, which, you know, you might not take long because it actually kind of ties into what you said before. It's like, how do you keep your individuality after marriage? Sure. Uh, again, a brilliant question. And that's something I struggled with personally for a really long time as a newlywed. Um, in the beginning, you're in that honeymoon phase and you're so excited about this uh, partnership that, you know, like we talked about earlier, you've been watching wedding videos for so long. I myself watched them for over a year and I'd be like, OK, when is my time going to come? It's finally here. Now, what do I do? I want to be with this person 24-7. Um, but it turns out if the person that you have married, inshallah, that person is your divine match, is your soulmate they're going to challenge you to reach higher levels of your own self-understanding. So my husband, you know, very early on, he would say, uh, Ramsha, I need to take my me time. And because maybe it was just me and what I had grown up thinking that, oh, as a woman, you know, I need to just devote myself to my husband and 24 seven, I uh, finally have him. I have to be with him. He was like, no, Ramsha, first of all, the best thing that you can do for me is take care of yourself, find something that you love to do, you know, what, your hobbies, you have your own hobbies. So when we, you know, set aside a day or set aside a few hours in a specific day, we're going to take that space and that time to just be by ourselves, do our own thing, 
Because if we're always together 24 seven, there's the risk of yes, suffocation, even with you know the love of your life. And also what are you guys gonna have to share with each other if you're not going out and trying new experiences? You're enriching each other's lives that way. So definitely, definitely, you have to take that step to you know carve out that me time and you'll be a much better partner, more fulfilled for it. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I love that. I think it's so important. I think what you shared is absolutely crucial because a lot of people feel that when they're with somebody, that's it. They're like, you know, tied by the hips and they can't move. But anyway, we have so much more questions. Make sure you stay with us. We've got the last part of the show coming up, but we have so much more time to take in your calls and we will see you in a few moments. Make sure you come back and join us soon. Salam. With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by SingleMuslim.com. I'm absolutely loving the show tonight and we've got so many of you sending in your questions. I just want to say thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And you know what? I can't even have time to ask my own because I've got more questions coming through. I'm going to go straight through it just to make sure that I get through all of them. So, um, Ramsha, we're going to go straight into this question for you. And it says, Salam Fahima and Ramsha, thank you for coming on today. As the topic is seven weeks to find the one, it's pretty much like a summer holiday, summer break time. Do you think seven weeks is a, a good talking stage or actually getting to know somebody for marriage? Like, you know, would it be like the actual marriage stage where you'd meet someone in that time or just talking? Um, you've given so much good advice. And the other thing is, what makes a first good impression and overall impression Islamically? Thank you so much for that question. I think it's really important. And there's a couple of stages in there. So you take it away for us, Ramsha. What's your thoughts on it? Sure thing. Thanks so much, Fahima. So first of all, thank you for the question. That is a multifaceted question. So let's dive right in. The first thing you asked is seven weeks enough to, um, you know, get to know someone or uh, if I understood it correctly, is it enough time to talk to someone to find a match? I can share from my own personal story. I started out my journaling in January and, um, you know, uh, with everything that I wanted in a potential partner, put myself out there, letting go of all the people I held on to, uh, put myself out there onto every platform you can think of, including Rishta Uncles, okay? And then in May of 2021 is when I uh, got the call. Uh, my best friend had an uh, intuitive feeling that tonight, like today is gonna be the day. I got this call from my future father-in-law and that's what got us talking, that was May, in July, we were engaged, so about seven weeks, you could say. Um, so that that's from the talking stage where you get that initial, you know, interest, and then you, you know, have a couple of phone calls, get to know each other. So don't put a specific timeline on it, but just think the best timeline, like the most abundant, most beautiful, most uh, easy timeline is opening up for you. So I definitely believe that it can be done in seven weeks. Uh, the second part of your question was about having a first, a good first impression on a potential partner. This is a really, really interesting question. Mm. As, you know, like Fahima, when we go for interviews, right? Or when we, you know, are meeting someone for the first time or we're, when we're in a completely new situation, we usually feel like, you know, we're, we have our guard up, like we have all these prepared, you know, bullet points and we're going to share this and we're going to share that. Um, so with this one, with finding love and true authentic connection, it's really, really important that you do this right. You're going to be spending the rest of your life with this person. You're going to have your babies with this person. You're going to grow old together with this person. So the good first impression is truly being yourself. 
it's truly leaning into, you know, that um, beautiful, the best part of you into your light, right? That's what enlightenment is all about. Into your own inner light. Don't hide a part of yourself. Don't second guess yourself because with the right person, it will click. They will love your flaws. They will love, you know, all of the things that you thought you had to mask from the world. Um, they will just, you know, hold on to it all. So don't hide a part of yourself because when you hide parts of the true you, that's when you attract the wrong person because they're attracted to the false mask, not the real you. So that's a good first impression, in my opinion. Brilliant. I love that. I think that's really, uh, again, another important factor that we need to consider because we're always trying to put our best foot forward and we're giving, you know, some sort of like, you know, sometimes we do hold back as to who we really are and then we don't get to see the response, the reaction and also trust your gut. A lot of the times we do have that within us. And the more and more that you will have a stronger intuition, again, if you work on yourself and as again, you know, go with du'a, go with, you know, salah, go with prayer, go with tawakul and on top of everything else, you know, know and understand yourself with values and inshallah it will work we have another question quickly um which is saying um please tell me how can i improve my emotional well-being so i love myself entirely without needing someone else's validation additionally how can i handle being disliked by someone without spiraling into self-hate wow another interesting question quite quite deep these are <laughs> Um, Fahima, can you go over the first part of that question one sure. more time? It's basically how could they improve themselves entirely um, by not having to need someone else's validation. So, you know, being emotional, um, sort of like having a, a very strong emotional well-being themselves. So they don't feel like they're in a sort of uh, attachment relationship, I guess. Sure, sure. So that's, again, a question that comes from, you know, beginning to know yourself. So that's really awesome that you're starting on that beautiful journey of a lifetime. Um, the second thing that I would say is, again, consult with a licensed mental health professional to help you, you know, on that path to not just discovering yourself, but also feeling that emotional wholeness within you so that when you love yourself or all the parts of you the flawed and the beautiful you know beautifully um imperfect parts all of the parts all together then that is when you're going to be able to track someone who mirrors that whole sumness back to you so definitely work with a therapist work with someone that you vibe with um someone that you feel really comfortable with and um you know definitely get started on that uh some of, uh, one of the uh, mentors that I had in my premarital journey really, really encouraged me to do premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely really, really important. And that's I what... Yeah. yeah. And I guess that will also answer the second question about not having to spiral down into self-hate if there was rejection. Because I know a lot of us feel that maybe it's something wrong with me. That's why I'm not getting married. Maybe no one's choosing me. Maybe, you know, this, that and the other. So you either blame the world or other people or you blame yourself. So this is all psychological kind of like, you know, steps that will be analyzed when you speak to somebody. And hopefully, inshallah, that will actually, you know, help you. So do you have anything else to add to that question, Ramsha, with regards to spiraling downwards or would you have some final words to say because we are coming on towards the end but we do need to obviously move on with regards to some of the th resolutions that you have for us before we end sure Fahima. so that's what we do with our clients in a light match is that you know uh, spiraling into self-loathing that's where you you know detach yourself from the outcome on the outside and you go within and you tell yourself that hey if this person is making me question my worth, this is the wrong person. I'm mm. asking the wrong person. So right away, this is an immediate sign that when you, in the presence of this potential match and this rejection, it's coming from my own personal experience, again, of years of thinking that I wasn't good enough, when we all know that whoever asked this question is an is a brilliant catch, okay? Amazing, brilliant girl, and you're just asking the wrong person. The same thing happened with me. When I was asking the wrong person, I never felt like I was enough. 
when I came to know the right person, he always built me up and I never had to pretend. I always felt like, and I knew that I was enough from the get go. I didn't have to Beautiful. be anybody. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, we have come to the final part of the show and we've only got about maybe three minutes left. Would you like to share some final thoughts and words with us before we end, as well as share how people can reach you as well? Because I really want to make sure that, you know, everyone gets to hear your words uh, before we end. Sure, Pima. I just want to ask, I know you mentioned you had a few questions so I want to, you know, just give it over to you if you have anything that you want to share. No, no. I think a lot of our guests have covered most of everything that I wanted to say. So we're always on the same page and the same vibe. So I really do make sure that, you know, if you want to if you want to add anything towards the end before we do end, please do so now and also share how can people get in touch with you? Where can they reach you? And if they want more information, you know, please take it away. Sure. So the message that I want to leave here today is with everyone wants peace. Everyone wants their hearts to find that fulfillment, to be at rest, right? I'm here to tell you that peace comes from letting go and letting God. Trusting, that's the whole concept of Tawakkul. That's the whole concept behind my book about how submission, surrender to the one, is truly the theory of everything. Because when you let go and let God, after, you know, tying your camel, after doing all of the action steps that we covered and that we do in Enlightened Match, then you let go to the one who loves you the most. That's when, like Rumi said, and you could tell I'm a lover of poetry, um, that what you seek is seeking you. So when you truly trust that God has the most beautiful plan, you're able to relax knowing that he has your back. Unconditional love is looking out for you. And that's when your most beautiful, miraculous story, just like how it's unfolding for me, inshallah, I know it for a fact, and we're gonna hear from you guys inshallah soon, um, it's gonna happen for you too. So I pray that for you guys, for everyone that's watching, whether it's live or after the show, um, from you know the deepest part of my heart, I pray for you guys. You guys will be in my prayers. Please keep me in yours as well. Keep us in yours. And if you guys want to get in touch, the best way is on Instagram. So if you have an Instagram, my handle is at Coach Ramsha, R-A-M-S-H-A. I'm sure we can post it up on the link uh, with the link to the show. And that's the way to get into my world and to learn really what this is all about. And, you know, inshallah find your person your forever person okay using beautiful science. beautiful thank you so so much for being with us tonight thank you for sharing all your stories and your insights and i know that's just only touched the surface so please anybody that's interested go on to instagram right now give at coach ramsha a follow and inshallah you know you can have some much further you know details as to how she can help you personally i just want to say again thank you so much ramsha for being with us tonight you've been an absolute gem so delightful to be with you tonight and again i just want to say um, a lovely lovely conversation really really inshallah you know hope the best for you and to you know also look out for how your journey continues and for all of you dear viewers amazing amazing interaction tonight thank you so much for all your questions inshallah we have answered them correctly and if not again you can contact us and we can definitely or contact my guest tonight we can definitely continue and make sure that you get more questions in we will be back next week with the same uh show make sure